the bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western Theater. Drifting along. Hollywood comes your all-star Western theater, starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest star today is Republic Pictures' great new cowboy singing star, Marty Hale. My name is Cotton Seed Clark, and here are the Riders of the Purple Sage. Deep within my heart lies a melody, a song of old phantom poem, where in dreams I live with a memory beneath the stars all alone. It was there I found beside the Alamo Enchantment strange as the blue up above Moonlit past that only she would know Still hears my broken song of love Moon in all your splendor, no only my heart Call back my old rose of sand and soul Lips so sweet and tender like petals far apart Speak once again of my love, my own song empty words I know still live in my heart all alone all that moon let pass by the Alamo and rolled my rose of San Antonio Genuine sincerity and realness in their vocal offerings have made the Riders of the Purple Sage one of the best-loved singing groups in the field of Western and folk music that radio has ever known. Here they are with one of your favorite Western heart ballads simply arranged to please listeners in all fields of music. An old Milano. <laughs> Chanting voice kept calling. I could have sworn it was an angel, for heaven rang within my ears. I had to follow when suddenly appeared a vision who whispered, Welcome to. Then gently smiled at my hello How could this happen to me? Such a thrill I could never resist And as our two silhouettes Were embraced by the moon
Taking time out from his newest all-color picture to visit with us again is the screen's handsome, hard-riding, straight-shooting, singing cowboy, Marty Hale. <laughs> Our guest star is heard in a story of the West written especially for him entitled Texas Adventure with Boy Willing, Al Sloy, and Jimmy Dean, the writers of the Purple Sage. Miss Louise Arthur is heard as Mary Jane and Joe Forte as Lawyer Smith. With Marty at the wheel, we find the boys all Texas bound. It seems that an uncle of Marty's left him a West Texas ranch some time ago, and he has recently received a letter from his lawyer advising him to come to Texas and make an effort to put the place in shape before Johnson grass, bitter weeds and snakes and centipedes made it a permanent address. Well, well, they're on their way. Texas, here we come. Hey, Monty, slow this crate down a little. Don't worry, boys. I got my finger on the trigger and my eye on the hog. Well, what if one of these tires explodes? Not one of these tires. They're as solid as the rock of Gibraltar. Hold it, Monty. Look out. Hey, watch out. There's a ditch. Sir. Leave him alone, Dean. He knows what he's doing. Boy, beginning right now, don't ever mention the rock of Gibraltar to me again. I've lost faith in it. Well, the next thing on the list is to change that tire. Ooh, in this hot Texas sun. You guys know I've been having trouble with my sacroiliac here lately. I'm afraid I won't be much help. Yeah, and my arm ain't healed up yet from the time I got thrown off that horse, well, you know. come on, Dean. This can't be any worse than pushing a plow all yeah, day. That's right. We ought to be getting pretty close to your place, Monty. Right over this hill, boys, and we're there. Paradise Valley, I call it. Well, here's the top of the hill. And there's Paradise Valley. Holy mackerel, is that your ranch? Yeah, it's it's kind of run down, though. Yeah, weeds a mile high. Well, if that shack is your ranch house, then what does the shack look like? <laughs> I see right now there's going to have to be a lot of work done around here, boys. Well, let's don't let that discourage us. Well, with your bum arm and Monty's sacroiliac, it's mighty easy to see who's going to beat their brains out working. Hey, one of you guys give me a hand with this gate. I can't turn loose of this two before here. Hey, Dean. Yeah, what do you want now? Help me swing this gate around so I can nail this hinge on. Yonder comes old Monty. He's got somebody with him, too. Got somebody with him? You ain't just a kidding. He really has. Now, that's where Texas has ever stayed in the Union skin. Well, what do you mean? Boy, I mean pretty women. Boy, look at her. Oh, yeah, you guys, quiet you... down. Quiet down. She might be a nice girl. Well, what's wrong with a nice girl being pretty? I've seen a lot of pretty <laughs> yeah, girls that are pretty. Well, boys, how's the fence and gate business? Oh, pretty good, Monty. Howdy, ma'am. Howdy. Boys, this is Mary Jane Carter from the next ranch. Well, howdy, ma'am. Oh, it's mighty nice to have neighbors like you, Miss Carter. Thank you. When we were kids, we used to play together. Oh, it's too bad you grew up. Boy, if you don't mind, Mary Jane and I would like to talk with you a few minutes. I'll be glad to, Monty. Yeah, anything to keep out of work, that's him. Let's go into the house. You boys keep things going till I get back. Oh, come on, Dean. Let's get all the stinkweed cleared out of Paradise Valley. All right, Monty, what was it you wanted? Well, according to Mary Jane, instead of me inheriting a nice piece of ranch property, I've got a white elephant on my hands. Well, I don't get it. What do you mean? I'm just finding out that there's an $8,000 mortgage due on this place two weeks from today. Say, hey, that ain't good. Didn't you know about this before? Well, that's the part I don't understand. The least that lawyer could have done was to tell me about it before I came way out here. Why, well, I haven't got a chance in the world to raise that much money. Have you talked to the lawyer? Yeah, and if you ask me, I don't trust him no further than I could throw a bramer bull with a tail. Hmm. The bank holds the mortgage. It's Banker Jenkins that owns the two ranches that join this property on the north and south. Oh, now I get it. If he forecloses on this place, then he'll own the entire strip. That's exactly right. But 8000 bucks? why, heck, all I own is my automobile, and the finance company owns it. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Tell you how to raise the money? I don't know, but it's got me buffaloed. This place is worth fifteen or 18000 bucks. bucks that's worth a nickel, and I hate to think of that banker getting it for a lousy 8000 
Well, I reckon there's no need to cry over spilt milk. So what do we do next, Monty? We'll stop work on the place for a few days till we see what we might do to figure this thing out. Well, that stopping work will be good news to slow in Dean. Well, I must run along, Monty. I have to prepare a supper for Daddy, you know. I sure do appreciate your help, Mary Jane. I wish I could really help. Oh, uh, Miss Jane, I was just wondering, uh... What were you wondering? Oh, uh, mm, nothing. Any way we can help, Monty, please let us know. Well, it's been mighty nice meeting you, Miss Mary Jane. See you soon, I hope. I hope so. Goodbye, Monty. Don't forget to call on us. Oh, boy. She sure is some fine-looking girl. <laughs> Texas is full of them. Then you take all the rest. Just leave her to me. Oh, no, you don't. You keep away from her. Oh, oh, sure, sure, sure. I, I wouldn't think of cutting in on you, Marty. Well, say, by the way, uh, what are you doing tonight? Well, I thought I'd better ride into town. Might run into that lawyer again. Uh, what are you going to do? Well, I'm kind of tired. Uh, thought maybe I might hit the hay early. Well, let's call on Floyd and Dean and give them the bad news. Okay. <laughs> Won't you come in? Well, thank you, ma'am. I was just passing by, and I thought I'd drop in and say hello. That's nice of you. I'm just sitting around reading. Daddy just went to bed. Oh, that's nice of him. Oh, I mean, he did. <laughs> Where's Marty? Oh, Marty rode into town. Said he was going to try and find that lawyer again. I do hope he finds a way to meet that bank note on his place. Well, it doesn't look too good at this point. How do Al and Jimmy feel about it? Well, just between us. They're not too bright. That is about business matters. Oh. So they'd have the whole thing figured out before the night was over. Uh, it's sweet of them to be so encouraging. Yeah, oh, well. They'll come up with some screwball idea. Mm, do I hear a guitar? Yeah. Who plays one around here? Mm, no one that I know of. Then it can only be one of four guys. Al and Jimmy ain't that romantic. And I doggone sure ain't doing it. So that leaves just one guy. You mean Monty. I mean Monty, the big fibber, said he was going to town. I'll look out the window. Anybody that would fib to a pal like that. That's who it is. He's sitting at the end of the porch. Say, wait a minute. Let's let him serenade us. You know, this could be fun. Wait a minute, listen, listen. You're the sweetest rose in Texas. me right nose and exes in my book of memory. You've heard them sing about the one rose and the rose of San Antonio. But they could never paint you in a picture or a song. You're the sweetest rose in Texas. Trusty guitar, if that doesn't put a little romance in her veins, then her heart's as cold as an old empty jug. Hi, you Marty. How about another chorus? Once over lightly. Why, you dirty dog, you. I thought you was going to bed early. Yeah, and how are things in town with Lawyer Smith? Looks as if you two got your wires crossed. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm dropped them and get out of here. I'm trying to get some sleep. <laughs> You get the lawyer out here tomorrow and leave the rest to Dean and me. But what good will that do? Well, just don't ask any questions. Just do as we tell you and forget all your troubles. You guys don't make sense. What good will it do to have the lawyer out here? Now, look, it won't cost you a thing to do as we ask. Now, will you let well enough alone? All right, I'll call him up in the morning. Right now, I'm going to hit the hay. Sure. Uh, 
see you guys in the morning. Okay, Good night, Monty. Good night, Monty. Now, look, you two guys. Either you let me in on this, or I'm going to put a couple of great big scorpions in your bed about midnight. All right. We'll let you in on it, but I wouldn't put Monty wise, because he's liable to back out. Well, come on. What is it? Well, tonight, while you and Monty was out double-crossing each other, Dean and me drove into town and bought this. Yeah, look under this blanket. For God's sake, a barrel. What are you going to do with a barrel? Oh, we're going to use it for something mighty special. And as soon as Monty's had time to get to sleep, we're going to commence to begin. Howdy, I take it you're Mr. Smith. That's right. Where can I find Mr. Hale? Well, he went over to the Carter place. He's due back most any minute now. I suppose he told you of the unfortunate mortgage the bank is holding against this place? Yes, sir, he has. And he's mighty upset about it. Yes, it's most regrettable. But since it's an inheritance, uh, anyway, he... The way I look at it. I told Monty this morning that he ought to pack up and head back to California. Yes, from what Monty tells me, you boys are his closest friends. Well, uh, I guess you'd say we're friends all right. Yes. Monty's kind of a funny fella. Uh-huh. You know, we believe in getting what we got coming and let the other fella worry for himself. That's, That's sound thinking, my boy. Sound thinking. You see, it's like this, Mr. Smith. We're kind of put out at Monty for hauling us all the way out here to Texas and making work horses out of it. Yes. It ain't right. That isn't right. I can easily see your point of view. Hey, boy, come here a minute. Yes. All right, all right. What's he so excited about? I haven't the slightest idea. Yes, sir, Mr. Smith. I say it's every man for himself this day and time. Yes, that's right. What's wrong, Chloe? Oh, plenty. I've been watching this water well all morning. The doggone water's contaminated. Contaminated? That's yes. odd. Water hereabouts has always been very good. Well, something has turned the water black, and it, it keeps bubbling. Bubbling? Let me look. Say, wonder what makes that. Say, this is most unusual. I can't understand why. Quick, son, lower that bucket into the well and fill her up. Yes, sir. You know, this seems almost impossible. Well, I hope it ain't poisoned. We've been drinking this stuff. Quick, son, up with the bucket. That's it. Yeah. Now, now, let me see. Well, what do you reckon's wrong, Mr. Smith? You say it's been bubbling up? Yeah, all morning long, just like there was somebody down in the water blowing bubbles up to the top. Hmm. Well, that'd be kind of foolish. I don't reckon there's nobody down there, do you? <laughs> now, I have... Listen, boys. <laughs> Does uh, anyone know about this? No, I just noticed it this morning myself. You're sure Monty Hale doesn't know about this? Oh, I'm sure he doesn't. Mm. Say, that's all. Now, 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 look, boys. <clears throat> How would each of you like to have a nice new hundred-dollar bill of peace? Oh, a oh, hundred-dollar bill? Yes. Mm. Now you're talking our language. Just, uh, just say nothing about this to anyone, especially Hale. No one, you understand? Right here is a hundred dollars for each one of you. Oh, good. Mm. But wait a minute. What about our partner, Dean? Oh. Well, here's a hundred for him, too. Now, remember, not a word to anyone about this. It'll be our little secret, huh? Just leave it to us, Mr. Smith. I know I can depend on you boys. You look honest to me. The minute Marty gets in here, come to rush into town to see me. But I have some important news about his mortgage. And be sure he doesn't discover this... <clears throat> This contaminated water well. Oh, sure, sure. Just leave everything to us, Mr. Smith. I'm telling you, Jenkins, there's enough oil under that ground to make it rich. Why, it's bubbling up of the well just like, well, just like there was somebody under the water blowing bubbles up to the top. Now, look, guys, this doesn't make sense. What's it all about? Well, we can't tell you, Monty. But just do as we say and everything will be all right. It can't miss. Yeah, we can't explain it, Monty. You see, we made a deal with a certain party not to. All right, all right. What do I do now? Go see Mr. Smith. He's in town waiting for you. Tell him that you've arranged for the mortgage money to be sent here tomorrow and that you're going to pay off the bank notes. Well, what if he waits until tomorrow and I can't pay? Oh, don't worry about that. Then give me something to worry about. This doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> now, look, Monty. The way I got this figured out, he's going to get big-hearted and offer to buy the place outright. And don't settle for a cent less than 50000 50000 For this place? Don't worry. If you play your cards right, he'll pay it. Yeah, tell him the old place is dear to your heart or something. You yeah, know. and make it sound real. I wish you guys would tell me what this is all about. You'll do better if you don't know. Now, remember, don't even budge till he offers you 50000 Just act like an innocent babe in arms. 
Monty, my boy, I'm glad you dropped in. I've been working mighty hard in your behalf. I sure appreciate all you're doing, Mr. Smith, and I've got some good news. No, you, uh, you didn't find out. Find out what? Oh, oh, nothing. That is, <clears throat> what was this good news? Uh, thanks to a friend of mine in California, I've got enough money coming in by express tomorrow to pay off the notes. What's that? Like I said, I can pay off the mortgage tomorrow. Oh, but you can't do this. I mean, now, now look, son, that's what I meant when I said I've been working hard in your behalf. Believe it or not, Monty Hale, my boy, I've arranged for the bank to buy your place outright, including the note against it, and it's a nice profit to you. Now, what do you think of that? Ah, that's mighty nice of you, Mr. Smith. Uh, How much do you think they'd give me? Well, believe it or not, I talked them into paying you the sensational price of uh, $15,000. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. I wouldn't sell for that. Now, don't be foolish, Hale. But by straining a point, mind you, straining a point... I may be able to answer them up to, uh, 20000 Uh, that's mighty kind of you, sir, but in memory of my dear uncle, uh, Mr. Uncle, uh, Herkimer. Yes? Yeah, I couldn't sell for that kind of money. Now, now, look, Hale, my boy, I know you're sentimental. Jenkins, the banker, owns the property on each side of you. Now, he must have your strip to complete his section. He's authorized me to bargain with you. So I'm, I'm going to stretch a point. And offer you twenty-five thousand uh, dollars. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. I uh, thirty thousand dollars. That's nice of you, sir. But uh, forty thousand. You don't understand, sir. I love the old place, and my last offer fifty thousand dollars. Well, in a case like that, I'm sure Uncle Herkimer would forgive me for letting the old place go. It's a deal. <laughs> Under they come. Hurry, Dean. Hide away. And when we're sure Monty's closed the deal, I'll give you the signal. Well, I know exactly what to do. Just leave it to old Dean. Man, old man, old Smith will turn a handspring when he finds out. You just ain't a whooping, and be ready to catch his stomach. Well, boys, I've got news for you. Howdy, Mr. Smith. Hello, boys. How are you? Uh, what is that, Monty? I've sold the place at a nice profit, thanks to, to Mr. Smith. I'll go get the other papers, sign them, and the deal is closed, Mr. Smith. Oh, the deal is all closed, is it, Mr. Smith? Yes, it's all closed, boys. And, uh, by the way, are you sure Monty knew nothing about that oil well? I I mean, the water well? Oh, on our word of honor, we didn't tell him a thing about it. You know, for a while today, I thought he might be wise. But no, he wouldn't have sold it so cheap if he'd have known. Here's the paper, Mr. Smith. I've got my money in the bank and your client owns my ranch. Boys, I've just sold Paradise Valley to Mr. Smith for $50,000. Good for you. Say, did one of you fellows move that barrel of crude oil I brought in from town yesterday? Well, I didn't know anything about it, Dean. What was that, son? Well, I bought a small barrel of crude oil yesterday. And the last time I saw it, it was sitting up on the water well stand. Now, where is it? On the water well? Yeah, I put it up there so I could siphon it out. It uh, must have fell in the water. Oh, no. No. You didn't do that. You you must be joking. What's wrong, Mr. Smith? I ain't joking. That's where I left it. No. No, it couldn't happen to me. You're, you're lying to me, son. Son, this is too much. $50,000. Look, what's this all about? $50,000 for one little barrel of oil? <laughs> 50000 just stick it, Pete. Uncle Herkimer is happy. <laughs> now, now I'm beginning to catch on. I get it now. Brother, you not only get it, you got it. $50,000. What brother. do I care for $50,000? <laughs> Money grows on trees. <laughs> $50,000 for one barrel of oil. <laughs> Thank you, Marty Hale. The writers of the Purple Sage and our guest star will return in a few moments.
And now let's welcome back to the all-star Western Theater microphone our guest star, Marty Hale. Bring him out here, boys. Thank you, folks. Well, boy, it's been a lot of fun being here with you guys today. Right now, i got to go home and practice my lines for some more play acting on the Republic lot tomorrow. Well, then I reckon we'd all better get in a word, Marty. So how about telling them about well, it? Well, there's not much to tell for, except that I've been busy with the Riders of Purple Sage the past week making the great picture along the Oregon Trail. Oh, uh, who did you say you'd been busy with? Why, the Riders of Purple Sage. That's a singing act from Texas. Oh, the Riders of Purple Sage. Never heard of them. <laughs> but in all seriousness, Monty, it's a real pleasure working pictures and radio with a fine star like Monty Hale. Come back to visit the folks again real soon. You bet I will, boy. So long, folks. Men of the West from out of the West with another of your favorite songs of the West. America's great Western singing stars, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage, sing So Long to the Red River Valley. having you with us again. Hope you'll be with us again next week. Until then, this is Foy Willing speaking for Al Floy, Jimmy Dean, and all of the writers of the Purple Sage, saying so long and good luck to you all. You've heard your all-star Western Theater, a V.M. Bear production starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest star today has been Marty Hale, now appearing in Republic's all-color Westerns with the Riders of the Purple Sage. My name is Cottonseed Clark, inviting you back again next week for your all-star Western Theater. <laughs> <laughs>